Ah, uh, say, boy, I say, let's get to the important crap. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. Let's uh, first wrap up uh, with a, uh, a quick uh, little demonstration. We have a cathode and an anode, okay, made out of copper. Okay, this is an electrostatic generator that's actually used to charge this, just like a battery. Now, what separates out the cathode and the anode is the glass. You, anybody can demonstrate. This isn't, uh, you know, um, uh, pseudoscience or anything. This is, this is an absolute fact, okay? You have a Pyrex jar that are between the two copper plates. Now, you're going to think, well, uh, glass, silicon dioxide, it's a semiconductor. I told you about microwave bowls exploding in the microwave and the... Uh, Old time linesmen that actually actually go out to uh, replace the glass insulators. Now, glass is not really an insulator; it's actually a capacitor, but it blows at a certain point. Um, but the actual uh, charge from uh, the generator, from the electrostatic generator off here to the side, is charging this. But the charge is not carried within the cathode and the anode because it's a dissectable capacitor. It's like taking a battery apart. You think it's going to be where it is; the charge is going to be where it is, but it's not. The charge is carried by the glass and the glass alone, okay? Um, that's a charge from uh, dissipating the charge off of uh, the... Uh, now it's going to be recharged. We've got the cathode and anode hooked up. We're going to spin up the uh, electrostatic generator. We're going to give it a charge. And then, of course, uh, the jar is going to be taken apart, okay? We're going to take apart the cathode and the anode and the inner glass uh, material. And you'll see that the actual charge is not carried by the cathode or the anode. Rather, it's carried by the Pyrex glass jar. So he's going to put it back together, drop uh, the cathode uh, and the anode back on there, and boom, the charge is residing in the glass. So the electrostatic generator that is hooked to this dissectable, in other words, it can be taken apart, dissectable capacitor, the charge is carried by the glass. Silicon dioxide is a semiconductor. Oh, gee, what does that mean? Light is a circuit. Um, you heard of these neat little things called solar panels? Oh, yeah. Light! Light is an electrical circuit. Everything in the universe is fields, okay? Light is a coaxial field. Longitudinal dielectric, transverse electrical and magnetic components result in frequency, whether that's the visible end of the spectrum or UV or infrared. Obviously, we're only interested in the visible end of the spectrum. So, glass is evil. I think I've made myself clear now. Lenses are all lenses. All lenses are designed not strictly as uh, what they're refractive, because you can plug all this crap into an application program, okay? I want to create a 50 millimeter lens uh, with a certain aperture. Well, your front element's going to have to be 60 millimeters wide. You have to have a refractive index, a blah, 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 blah. The secondary element needs to... There's a million ways you can build a lens. Each lens manufacturer builds the lens to have certain characteristics. They dope the glass with certain compounds which have electrical properties. Why the hell do you think ED glass changes the chromatic aberrational properties of frequency convergence from the near and far end of the spectrum of visible electromagnetic radiation? It has to do with electricity! Oh, so I kind of get it now. Lenses are electrical circuits. Well, yes, they are. You got it now, Beaver. You got it. So you mean to say that glass is not strictly just a bunch of elements with certain refractive indexes inside of an adjustable barrel? Yeah, I think you're getting it now. I think you're actually getting it. Lenses are electrical circuits designed specifically with certain doping agents to the semi glass. ED dope glass or not, glass is a dielectric capacitor. It's a semiconductor, it's silicon dioxide. Light is a coaxial circuit. Has energy. Yeah. Whew. That's why when you lay out in UV light, you get skin cancer. What the hell do you think's giving you the skin cancer? Well, UV light's giving me the skin cancer. What's the description? That's not an explanation. Why the hell is it giving you skin cancer? 
It's giving you skin cancer because of the high capacitance of the shorter wavelength ultraviolet light is damaging your dermis. Well, why doesn't infrared do that? Low frequency. Light is a circuit. All lenses are designed as electrical circuits. In the absolutist sense, yes, they are. In the general sense, does anybody look at a lens and go, ah, that's a neat 200 millimeter electrical circuit. Well, no, they don't. That's because 99.99999% of the world doesn't think in terms of electrical theory. But everybody at Nikon and Canon and Zeiss and everybody else designs these lenses. They know that. This is a damn fact. That's why they dope, dope their lenses with secret ingredients and they'll tell, never tell you what the ratios are. Never! It's a trade secret of Nikon, Canon, Zeiss, Sigma, everybody else. It is a trade secret. That crap is not getting put out on the web. Not unless someone hacks their computers. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. We're going to be talking about lenses and talking about uh, characteristics and properties that you have to understand. Resolution refers to lenses ability to distinguish finer and finer details. Lens contrast refers to the lenses ability to discriminate tonality between small adjacent areas. Lines per millimeter, remember that one? Adjacent uh, areas in the print lending a sense of texture and surface and depth. Here we're talking about translational or perceptual depth. Um, this is especially important if you can be shooting black and white. Very, very important because you're going to have to pick specific lenses. I mean, you can shoot great black and white lenses, uh, black and white uh, shots with any lens, but if you want the best where you have these really awesome tonal values, then you're going to have to pick the right lens. And that can be done. There are special lenses that are perfect for shooting black and white and ones that are great for shooting in color, but they suck at the shooting in black and white. This is a fact, it's irrefutable. Um, micro contrast is intertonal transmission. That's why Zeiss and some Nikkor lenses and a few others have incredible micro contrast, and the Sigma Fort lenses don't. None of them do. They got too much glass in them, and the way they're designed, they can be incredibly sharp, resolution-wise. Okay, resolution, resolution, distinguish fine details versus contrast, intertonal value. You have a really sharp lens that has a great color rendition, but can be a real stinky slut, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> when it comes to contrast. Micro contrast in the lens uh, is the ability to differentiate between smaller and smaller details and more and more nearly similar tonal quality values. This is referred to as micro contrast. The better a lens has a micro contrast, and it not, has nothing to do with the, the light and the dark ranges of distribution of tones in the final printer slide, means its ability to take two small areas of slightly different luminance and distinguish the boundary from one to the other. In shaded areas, this is where Sigma fart lenses and these other expensive crap lenses fail. They fail like a dirty dog. In shaded areas where very low tones, you'll see this milky look, this milky mush uh, appear, uh, which is very bad micro contrast. Now, there are endless times you and I and everybody else is shooting something and you got this shadowed area and there's all this detail in it and you go, why do my shadow areas look so muddy? That's because you're shooting a lens with crappy micro contrast, such as a Sigma fart lens. Um, <laughs> so micro contrast is a capturing all of the intermediate tonal ranges which contribute to the realism of the shot, especially in a low contrast composition. Gee, that's a lot of low-contrast compositions. For example, a pile of wood uh, and, and uh, stuff that's in the shadows. Uh, There's just a thousand examples. Muddy lenses capture, you say, eight stops of tone and uh, 30 intermediate tones. The lens with micro-contrast captures the same eight stops, for example, but instead of capturing 30 intermediate tones, it will capture 60, 70, and further on still of intermediate tones. That's why certain lenses have to be picked if you want the absolute best rendition, not only in color, but especially in black and white. Um, yeah, micro contrast lenses' ability to pick up the finer detail between very similar colors, such as the gradation of skin, texture on dis different, uh, distant structures, and capturing high-range tones 
And this is very, very important. Especially if you want to piss your money away on a crap lens. You have to know what you want to shoot, what sort of properties you want. You know, artistic uh, discretion obviously is important. If you want to use a crappy lens and you think it looks awesome and people buy your pictures and you want to keep shooting with that crappy lens, be my guest. You know, whatever floats your boat. Whatever dingles your chain. Um, you can have a lens of very low contrast that can be made to transmit the same overall range of light uh, from dark to white or to black uh, with high contrast. It will just show far less micro uh, detail in the scene and look relatively muddy and lifeless. Especially if you have uh, a composition that you shot and a lot of it's in, uh, in the shadow. Especially some of the portraiture where you just have some rim lighting and everything over here with a, like a right Zeiss lens or a right Nikkor lens, it could look, look awesome. But if you got a low contrast crap lens, uh, then it's going to look muddy over here. Muddy. You can correct some of that in post, some of it, but it can never be added in post. You can't add that intratonal value no matter what filter you use in Photoshop. I don't give a damn what anybody says. It cannot be added. Um, so that's that. Make some more videos on various uh, things uh, on lenses, this ongoing series. Next, I'll be giving uh, examples of resolution versus lens contrast because everybody confuses those two. And thanks for watching, or something like that. <laughs>